Shalom. Today we have come to the last of the participle lessons in understanding Hebrew verb structure. We have already covered all the binyanim for the participle, but when we were talking about the PL, I noted that there uh, was a special case if the PL was hollow, and it also happens in the hitpa'el, so we're going to examine that. A hollow verb is one in which the middle letter is either vav, either cholom vav or shurik, or a yud. Sometimes you will see uh, an artificial binyan, which is made up, uh, I, I know it appears in Jacenius, maybe it's in some of the older grammars, which is called polal or pulal, if it's the pual. And the reason for this is that in the pl, and in the hitpa'el, when the verb is when the verb is hollow, the last letter doubles. So let's look at that. Uh, here's a root shub, which in the pa'al means to return. And so we see in the participle, rather than mashov or mashuv or something, we get this mishovev, and the last letter of the root will double in this form. The feminine form, mishovevet, it's recognizable as a feminine form. Mishovivim, mishovivot. So these are how, this would be a hollow verb in PL. So we see a masculine singular form in Isaiah 58, 12. Mishovev, nitivot, lashevet. And probably you are familiar with this verse. So shu in the pa'al is going to mean return. Here, the mishovev is translated as the restorer, the restorer of the streets in which we can dwell. In Ezekiel 38.8, we have a feminine form, mishovevet mecherev, and it is uh, feminine here because it's talking about the land. The land is feminine, and it's the land which is uh, being brought back from the sword. Just by way of comparison, if we look at this in the hefeel form, in the hefeel form, we see that the vav becomes a yud, and we've already covered this. And, uh, but as far as the meaning goes, let's look at that. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 7, uh, Abraham is mixed up with having given his uh, wife Sarah to the king of Gerar, Avimelech, and uh, he needs to return her. God lets Avimelech know that uh, he needs to return Sarah to Abraham. And he says, Ve'im in cha meshiv, if you do not return her, if you do not cause her to be returned back to Abraham. So probably the, the meanings between the PL and the Hefeel are pretty close. The PL is not as common. In Psalm 19, verse 7, talking about the Torah, it says that it is Meshivat Nefesh, converting the soul, restoring the soul, bringing the soul back to life, to fullness. In Judges 11:9. We see a plural form, uh, Yiftach, Jephthah. He was a great fighter, but he was also the son of a harlot, and so his brothers drove him out. But now they're in trouble. They want him to come back and lead the fight. And so he's saying, Im mishivim atem oti. If you bring me back, if you cause me to return. So the difference between the... PL meaning and the he feel meaning is not great. Maybe there's just some subtle differences there. The point is that in the PL, we're going to see that last consonant double. There's a similar phenomenon in the hit pa'el. We're going to look at the verb kum, which means to get up in the pa'al. In the masculine singular, it's mit kom mem. The last consonant doubles. Uh, you see two forms in the feminine, as we saw elsewhere, mitkamemet or mitkamama, but both recognizable as feminine forms, mitkamemim and mitkamemot. In Job 27.7, he is talking about his enemies, 
And he's talking about those who rise up against him. So that is mit koma me. It, the e at the end is for me, those who rise up against me. It has a stronger feeling than just rising up, but it's rising up out of self-determination. I'm the one who's getting myself up. Again in Job chapter 20, verse 27, talking about the evil man. Nigalu shamayim avono. The heavens will reveal his iniquity. The arts mitkomama lo. The land, again, in the feminine, is raising herself up against the evil man. In Psalm 17, 7, we see David pleading with the Lord that, that he should show wondrous things by his right hand and save those who trust presumably in him, in Yudhe and also against those that rise up, presumably against the Lord. So the mit komamim here is the participle, which uh, is the person, the, the people who are doing the action. Save those who trust in you, me, from those who rise up against you, speaking to the Lord. Again, comparing this to the concept of the he feel, we see in almost every case, uh, if, a, if a covenant is not cut using the verb karat, then it is using the he feel of kum, which is cause to stand, cause to rise up, in other words, to establish. And so here in Genesis 9, we see that the Lord is establishing his covenant with Noah and all his seed after him. We see that this looks like a normal he feel participle for a hollow verb. We lose the vav in the middle, but we have the yud of the he feel mekim. So again, we can see the difference between the pl for a hollow verb and hit pa'el. It will have that doubling of the last letter. Now there is a whole group of verbs which actually have a double letter at the end, and those are called geminate verbs, and we won't be discussing those until we get into the perfect, the past tense. Uh, geminate verbs, for example, sovev, which is already samech bet bet, they already have a double last letter, but they're not affected in the participle, so they're not covered. So, hooray, we reached the end of the participle, and next time we'll get into the perfect tense, the past tense. Until then, Tasimita Inayama Hashemayam, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.